President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday presented the 2020 budget to the joint session of the National Assembly. The total budget for 2020 stood at 10.3 trillion naira, expected revenue at 8.15 billion naira, aggregate expenditure 10.3 billion naira, and expected GDP growth rate at 2.93%, to list a few. Issues regarding tax was also presented with the government's introduction of the threshold for VAT registration, amongst others. In the studio with me to speak on this is Taiwo Oyedele. He's a partner and West African leader at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Sure. We met in Abuja during the NES, the Nigerian Economic Summit. But then we also, just alongside with that, the president was presenting his budget at the National Assembly. What was your initial thoughts when you saw the you know, breakdown of the budget for 2020? Yeah, so I think um, you know, very similar to the trends we've seen uh, in the past few years, um, except that on one hand, uh, I thought the budget was a little bit more realistic. Okay. So in terms of the benchmark uh, price for crude oil at 57, more realistic think, than 60. Yes, yes. And then the volume per day at 2.18 million barrels, more realistic than 2.3 million. Even though you know we still need to do a lot to hit that target or maybe even outperform it, usually you know in accounting we say it's good to be prudent. Um, so don't be too optimistic about life, and then walk your life around that optimism. If anything goes wrong, you then struggle. It's better to be a little bit conservative, and then you have the upside. Um, the other concern I, I still have with the budget is the level of debt. Mm -hmm. and debt servicing uh, uh, cost uh, compared to our very tiny revenue. I see a lot of inefficiencies in, in the way we do our budget, uh, and I think government is doing too much than what they need to do. Um, I think government needs to hands off you know, anything that is commercially viable, and that will be from ports to roads to rail to even electricity. Uh, these are things that if you create the right environment, private sector will run them efficiently, make money, and they'll still serve the people well. Government should then have to focus more on human capital development, like mm -hmm. education and healthcare, which, in my view, did not get enough uh, in the budget. But that's also because nothing actually gets enough. The money is not enough. Overall, uh, a budget that is more than the previous years, uh, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is how well we're going to implement that budget, not just mm -hmm. what we say in the budget. But then, based on what you rightly said regarding the debt to revenue ratio, we've seen a consistent decline. So this has been a consistent decline. Is this not a red mark for us? Yeah. So because our revenue, because everything is hinged on revenue, so the size of the budget has been growing, right? Uh, from seven to eight to nine, it's now nine to, 10. to 10 trillion. So to be honest, 10 trillion is small for the size of Nigeria's economy. So 10 trillion is under $30 billion. In fact, that is the money we should be spending on basic education alone. alone. Yeah. So we need to be clear about that. But given that it's small for the circumstances that we find ourselves, so government needs to ensure that we are not spending the bulk of that money servicing debts. So otherwise, it's a country running into you know, bankruptcy, mm -hmm. yeah, into financial problems. So what we need to do is to find a sustainable way of funding our national development, which is why I made the point about get rid of all the expenses that the private sector can do better and more efficiently. Focus on the few ones where only government can intervene in terms of providing the social services to the people, and then make sure that there's efficiency. One of the things I was impressed with as part of this budgeting process is government coming up with standard pricing. Because what we've seen in the past, somebody is buying um, a Toyota Land Cruiser and it's 12 million, another person is buying it and it's 80 million, you are wondering, mm -hmm. you know, is it customized? So people, a lot of padding goes into the budget, a lot of wastage goes into the budget, 
uh, we still find civil servants traveling all over the world to go and do training uh, that they could do in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Um, we still have the National Assembly with consistency project. They shouldn't be doing project. They should just focus on lawmaking because they do not have the structure to implement infrastructure development. So which means there's more inefficiency, potential for bribery and corruption and leakages is high. Mm. So I think we're at a point where we have the excuse and even the reason to make very drastic decisions that will be in the interest of Nigeria. And I hope that Mr. President, you know, before the end of his second term, will be able to make those calls. I mean, do you, do, do you foresee the curbing of all of these leakages, unnecessary leakages, that at the end of the day has a ripple effect on the general economic, you know, uh, results at the end of the year? Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to come from government. Um, I'm not very who optimistic. Be checkmating, who should be checkmating these things? Yes, I think it has to be citizen-led. So the people have to say, you know what, we've had enough. And I'm not talking about a revolution. I'm talking about the organized private sector, civil society organizations, citizens with the right knowledge, coming out first to educate the general populace. Because the, the fact that a lot of our population um, lives below poverty and they're ignorant, they can't ask questions. In fact, they don't even know their rights. So you find a governor who builds a road with 10 times the amount he should spend, quality is bad, and then he calls people to come and clap for him for dividend of democracy. And nobody's asking whether that is the quality of the road you're supposed to build, whether that's even your priority. We have governors building airports in places where they don't have primary schools. So until we get to a point where the citizens stand up to say, the money is small, but here is our priority, and we need you to focus on what's important to us as citizens, not what you want as our political leaders. Not what leaders. will make you look good for good your next time if you need exactly. to. Exactly. Mm. So I think citizens have to work with government to ensure that we get to the right place in terms of accountability, efficiency, prudence, right priorities, and even just restoring trust between the people, because it's a social contract between the people and the politicians. Now, we also have the issue on policy. We were at the summit. We mm. saw a, there were a lot of conversations about policies, policies, creating of policies that would enable both businesses, small and large, right, and then bring about the much necessary uh, external uh, dividend of some sort, foreign direct investment from foreign direct um, investors all, all around the globe. Now, would you suggest that the policies that we create here are more party related than, you know, national policies? Yeah, I don't think we would think that it's, it's about parties because, to be honest, I can't tell the difference between APC and PDP in terms of their philosophy and principles. So you can say Republicans are pro-rich and pro-businesses. Mm -hmm. You can say Democrats okay. are more you know, populist, trying to support poor people. And each of those have their very valid arguments. Republicans will tell you, if you take care of rich people and businesses, they will create the job for the poor people. Um, Democrats will say, no, tax them and use the money to take care of the poor people. But both of them make sense. But what it does for democracy is that one person or one group serves as a check on the other one. Mm -hmm. So in Nigeria, <clears throat> not even people in PDP or APC know what they stand for. So I don't think the budget and how they spend is anything to do with political parties. I think it's more about self-interest. That's what is the biggest component of how we do things. So that's the general so, value that all of them seem to yeah, have. Yeah, that's one thing that's consistent to all of them. So if you're in position today, you're thinking about your friend, yourself, your family, something oh, that look is... look good for your yeah, next exactly. opportunity If I'm a governor and I like to play golf, and that has happened before, if I'm a governor and I like to play golf, I'll build a golf course and tell the people I'm trying to attract tourism and see if somebody will fly from Europe and the U.S. to go to one village to come and play golf. Um, and then you spend a lot of money there. Uh, you also find that sometimes even the projects that are needed by the people, we spend almost 10 times to, to build them. And they're all over, so these things are easy to find. Some of them will start, will not complete. Because somebody gets to power and says, well, it wasn't my idea. So they'll start their own. So that's why we have so much mm -hmm. uncompleted projects. When mm -hmm. you have uncompleted projects, not only is the money wasted, Dead you, capital lose the, all exactly, around the country. you lose the opportunity to use that to you know, catalyze growth 
provide employment. So this is what we have been doing to ourselves. And there hasn't been any difference between political parties. So I think at the heart of it is selfish um, interest. Uh, part of it is to do with lack of understanding and not putting our best foot forward. Because if we have the right people in the right places, they tend to do better. Mm -hmm. And let's just speak uh, briefly on the tax the tax conversations that the president um, raised. We have a concern about introducing a VAT registration threshold of 25 million naira turnover mm -hmm. per annum for businesses. How does that work? Yeah, so there are somewhere around 160 countries around the world uh, that have VAT. I did not know of any single one country um, that says everybody has to register for VAT and charge VAT, which is what we have in Nigeria. So in Nigeria today, even if you're turned over your sales in a whole year, even if it's only 1,000 naira, you're supposed to go and register with FRS and charge VAT anytime you sell goods and services. Okay. That would include a Okada rider, you know, your hairdresser, your tailor, my barber, are supposed to be doing VAT. Honestly, they do not have the capacity, majority of them, to do it. They do not, some of them cannot even spell VAT correctly. And they, they don't, don't even to. understand what VAT means, you know. Exactly. So what that has led to is we have the vast majority of Nigerians that we make to commit illegality because we ask them to comply with a law that it's impossible for them to comply with. So what that also means is the tax authority is spending too much energy chasing after small businesses. So we say small okay. businesses are the engine of growth. Uh, we're told in Nigeria we have about 40 million MSMEs. You want them to have the space to breed, to grow, create employment, create prosperity. As they grow, which is the aspiration of every single person in business, mm -hmm. as they grow and they get to the level where they have the capacity to employ an accountant, they can keep proper records, then let them do that. So many of us have been saying this for years. So I'm glad that Mr. President has now finally uh, approved of this as presented during the uh, 2020 budget. So what it means is that if your sales turnover, the income you make from your business in a whole year is less than 25 million, you don't have to register for VAT. Okay. Now, by law, you have to register for VAT before you can charge VAT. So if somebody exempts you from registering for VAT, it means that you don't need to charge VAT. So these businesses, when they sell goods and services to their customer, they will not need to add VAT to their invoice. Mm. However, it does not mean that they will not pay VAT when they buy goods. So if your tailor makes less than 25 million naira a year, your tailor will not charge you VAT for sewing your clothes. But when your tailor is buying airtime, or buying mobile phone. Yeah, so on airtime, a mobile phone, even though it's for the business, your tailor will have to pay VAT to the extent that VAT is applicable. All right, so that is what it means. Uh, there are some people who will not know how much turnover they will make. So normally, depending on when we see the detailed guideline, uh, different countries will have an indication of what they call anticipatory turnover. If you anticipate that your income will cross 25 million, you mm -hmm. register from day one. Sometimes it's because you already have a contract, and the contract sum is more than 25 oh, million. So you already know like the outlook of what you're talking well, yeah, at the end of the get. year, and yes. then you have to just register. You have to register from day one. If you don't know, then we can give you a moving average of three months. In any three months, if your average turnover is more than what would make you make 25 million at the end of the year, mm -hmm. then you have to go and register. That we're talking about 67 million uh, in, in three, three months. months. Right, that's all we can have now. But thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me.